Chapter 9, The Problem of Nutrition. Fascinated by the sight of the remarkable gardens, I asked my devoted assistant if I could rest for a few minutes on a nearby bench. Lysias willingly agreed. A pleasant sensation of peace greeted my spirit. Playful sprays of colored water zigzagged in the air to form enchanting figures. Anyone observing this immense beehive of service, I remarked, might be led to inquire about several problems. What about provisions? I haven't noticed a ministry of economy. In the old days, explained my patient friend, services of that nature were much more important than now. However, our current governor decided to reduce all the life practices that might remind us of purely physical phenomena. Thus, activities involving provisions were reduced to a mere distribution service under the direct control of the government center. In fact, the measure has been very beneficial. The annals show that a century ago, the colony struggled greatly trying to adapt its inhabitants to the laws of simplicity. Many newcomers to Nasalar doubled their demands. They wanted sumptuous food and fine drinks, for they were still influenced by old earthly vices. Only the Ministry of Divine Union remained immune to such abuses due to its inherent characteristics. The other ministries, however, spent all their time overburdened with problems of the sort. Our current governor spared no efforts to solve the problem. As soon as he assumed his administrative duties, he adopted correctional measures. The older missionaries have told me about a string of curious incidents that occurred at that time. They said that at the governor's request, 200 instructors came down from a very high sphere in order to provide new instruction concerning the science of breathing and absorbing vital elements directly from the atmosphere. Numerous assemblies were held. Some of the technical collaborators of Nasolar were against these innovations, arguing that since this was a transition colony, it would be both unjust and impossible to immediately submit disincarnate spirits to such drastic measures without gravely endangering their spiritual makeup. But the governor didn't give in. The gatherings, the measures, and the activities continued for 30 years straight. Some eminent individuals went so far as to form public protests in order to complain. On more than 10 occasions, the Ministry of Assistance was overcrowded with patients who claimed to be victims of the deficient new system of nutrition. This would in turn encourage the enemies of the reductions to increase their accusations. In spite of it all, the governor never punished anyone. He summoned the measure's adversaries to his office and paternally expounded on the aims and benefits of this diet, emphasizing the superiority of such methods of spiritualization. For the most rebellious enemies of the new process, he facilitated study excursions to more elevated planes and thereby won a greater number of followers. I found this all very interesting, and after a long pause, I implored him, Please go on, my dear Lysias. How did the character-building struggle end? After 21 years of persevering effort by the government center, the Ministry of Elevation gave in and cut its supplies down to what was strictly necessary. The Ministry of Elucidation, however, took much longer to make a commitment due to the great numbers of spirits working there who were dedicated to the mathematical sciences. They were the most obstinate adversaries, since they were used to the ingestion of protein and carbohydrates, which they deemed indispensable to the physical body. They wouldn't give in to the new concept applied here. They sent the governor weekly, lengthy observations and warnings full of an analyses and numerical data, and they became quite indiscreet at times. The old governor never acted alone, however. He enlisted the assistance of noble mentors who guide us via the Ministry of Divine Union, and never dismissed even the smallest report without having examined it in detail. 
While the scientists were making their argument and the government was stalling for time, dangerous disturbances were beginning to occur in the former Department of Regeneration, which has since become a ministry. Encouraged by the rebelliousness of the collaborators in the Ministry of Elucidation, some of the less evolved spirits who were undergoing treatment there started acting contemptibly. These sorts of problems caused enormous schisms within the collective agencies of Nasolar, which in turn encouraged a frightening attack by dark multitudes from the umbral. They tried to invade the city by taking advantage of breaches in the Department of Regeneration where a large number of collaborators had set up a sort of black market to provide for their nutrition-related vices. The alarm sounded, but the governor stayed calm. Terrible threats hovered over everyone. Nonetheless, he asked the Ministry of Divine Union for a meeting, and after conferring with their highest council, he had the Ministry of Communication temporarily closed. He ordered the detention cells at the Department of Regeneration to be prepared for isolating the more recalcitrant spirits. He admonished the Ministry of Elucidation, whose impertinence he had constantly endured over 30 years and temporarily prohibited any assistance to the lower regions. For the first time in his administration, he had the electric batteries at the city walls turned on in order to emit magnetic darts to serve as a common defense. There was neither actual battle nor attack within the colony, but only resolute resistance. For over six months, the diet at Nasalar was reduced to the breathing in of life-supporting elements from the atmosphere, along with water blended with electrical, magnetic, and solar elements. Thus the colony experienced what the indignation of a kind and just spirit could be like. At the end of this most difficult period, the government was victorious. The Ministry of Elucidation admitted its error and cooperated in the work of readjustment. There were public celebrations, and they say that in the midst of the widespread joy, the governor was moved to tears and declared that everyone's understanding was his heart's true reward. The colony returned to normal, and the former Department of Regeneration was converted into a ministry. Since then, there has been a greater supply of nutritive substances that remind us of Earth, but only in the ministries of regeneration and assistance, where there is always a great number in need of such sustenances. In all the other ministries, the diet is limited to the essentials. That is, nutrition follows the rules of strictest sobriety. Nowadays, everyone realizes that the governor's supposed impertinence was a highly valuable measure for our spiritual liberation. Physical expressions were reduced, giving rise to a marvelous coefficient of spirituality. Lysias fell silent while I handed myself over to meditating deeply on this great lesson.